And I think that guy Lutz from GM was blogging. So some CEOs were blogging. The big question was, should your CEO blog? And, and I thought it was a crazy idea, the CEOs. So I said, no way. They should never blog. I don't, you know. But I thought, what if a, a CEO did, but he like went totally off the rails, and he totally did say what he really thought, you know, and, and it was just a complete jerk. And, and, and when the Wall Street Journal wrote something bad about him, he'd write something back saying what idiots they are, you know. I thought that would be really, you know, hilarious, and depending on the CEO. Um, and I was a big Apple fan, and, you know, Jobs is very reclusive, and he doesn't ever say much, and he's, when he does say stuff, he's very controlled and very, you know, very tight, and he'll repeat the same sentence over and over. So I thought, He'd be perfect, you know, because you know he knows everything about the industry. You know, Schmidt's on the way. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, like, okay, so he's got Google connections, so you can do Google Dish because he's got a connection there. You can do Sun Dish because there's a connection there. You can do Hollywood Dish because he's involved with Disney and Pixar, the music industry because of iTunes, and even politics. So it was like this lens that you could suddenly riff on all sorts of stuff, but through the point of view of someone who's much more interesting than I am, right? So, um, which was, that was the key to it. And, and I did it for like six weeks. And I said, okay, that was fun. I, I sent links to a couple friends of mine. I didn't tell them who, that I was writing. And I just said, oh, I found this blog. And um, they passed it on and it started growing. And after six weeks, I said, oh, that was fun. I shut it down. All these people wrote in saying, what happened? This is great. And I didn't, know, I didn't have site meter. I was so clueless about the internet. I didn't know that you could like meter your blog and anything, right? So somebody told me, like, put it back up and put a site meter on it. Then you can see what's, oh, really? So I did that. And I was like, you know, I told my wife, I was like, there were like a thousand people this week, you know, like from all over, like, you know, people in Russia, you know, whatever, all over the world, in England and all over the States. So I started doing it more seriously then. And then it started evolving as like, first it was just jokes. Then I started adding in, like, I could actually cover the news through this filter. It was like The Daily Show or Colbert. You could actually, you could riff on the news, but you could still actually do real, kind of real coverage, you know? And then I also started doing this fictional stuff where I would have scenes or recurring storylines, like a comic strip would have, where something happens on Tuesday, and then you build on it on Friday. And before I came to Forbes, I was writing fiction. I did an MFA at University of Michigan and wrote, a, you know, published a couple books. And I was still trying to write books even when I was at Forbes, but I wrote two and just kept them in drawers. They were serious and artsy, and they didn't really work. And but you know, like, if you get an MFA, I, you probably don't have a lot of MFAs here. But you know, literature, just like literature, or do you? I don't know. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, see, there's one. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, it's it's at Michigan anyway. It's very serious, and you know, people would agonize over literature and blah blah blah. So like, you know, it never occurred to me like fake Steve could be like a book, you know, or literature because it seemed like a joke. But um, it was starting to become kind of like that, like. There was this world of, you know, Larry Ellison's a character, and Bono's a character, and Schmidt's a character, and, and Schwartz. So all these people, and they're exaggerated cartoon versions of, of the real people. I think, I've never met the real people, but, uh, but it was this weird little world. And then I realized, like, oh, you could actually make a novel out of this. It was sort of the, the, the raw material was there, and the voice was there. And, uh, and then the option stuff happened, this SEC thing happened. And... I thought, like, that's going to be really big. I think I was wrong, because now it's you know, gone away. But um, and still, I still think there, there may be something going on there. But um, at the time, I thought, oh, so you have a protagonist with a voice. You have a world that they inhabit. And it's Silicon Valley, which is fun and kind of cool. And now you have the impetus for a storyline. So the storyline of the book is that it opens with Steve being told the SEC's after you, the U.S. Attorney's after you, and he's very dismissive and doesn't want to believe it. But, you know, gradually they circle in and circle in, and, so, and it becomes really real to him, like, you're really, really in trouble. And, uh, and then, then the, the question of the story is, well, how do, you, how do you get the protagonist out of trouble? How does he get, his, get himself out of danger? Which is a pretty, pretty straightforward plot of any kind of book, right? Character in trouble and danger has to get out or, you know. Um, so... That was the, the genesis of the, of the book. And the, uh, uh, the blog now has continued. I was anonymous for a long time, as you probably know. And, but I was really bad at being anonymous. And I told almost everybody I knew. And I told Forbes back in March. And you know, so like a lot of people knew. I knew like, this is going to blow up eventually. This is going to come out. Um, I've known that for a long, long time. But I, I wanted to be anonymous because it was more fun, I think, for people to read it thinking, you don't know who it is, and it's just kind of like you forget about that there's a guy. I think it's worse to know, like, oh, it's Secret Diary brought to you by, you know, this idiot from Boston. Like, it's just not as fun, right? It's just that you know, now that you know who it is, I think. People are still reading it, so maybe not. But um, I, at one point in January, it started to get like, like 90, that's like 90,000 readers a month. And I thought, this is really, you know, big. But I wasn't making any money. I was just doing it, but I could see it was getting bigger and bigger. And um, 
someone told me I should shut it down. A lawyer said, you know, you can't, you should, you should stop doing this. You're going to get fired and, you know, it's really bad. And, um, so I, I posted something saying, well, I think I'm going to have to shut this down. And my lawyers have told me this and, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I got all this email from, from like Wired and Fast Company, a bunch, oh, Time, uh, no, no, Fortune Small Business. And a bunch of magazines wrote to me saying, oh, we'd like to sponsor it or do something. Would you like to do something? But in all this mail, I got one from the publisher of Forbes, who's a friend of mine, saying, I'm the Rich Cargard, I'm the publisher of Forbes, and um, you know, we'd really, we think you're great, and we don't know who you are, and we'd love you to come uh, write a column for us, you know? And meanwhile, I had been in Forbes in New York that week, you know, begging for a raise, and, you know, and they were like, ah, there, you jackass, you know? No. But so meanwhile, the publisher's writing to me, you know, offering, you know, throwing, you know, baskets of money my way. So I, I thought, what do I do, you know? And I, I, I you know, because I know him. I know him really well. So I wrote back and said, well, how much would that pay? You know, what would the, what would the money be? And, um, he wrote back saying, well, let's talk about it, blah, blah, blah. And like, so we started going back and forth. And then the guys who, this, Forbes has a stake, uh, a Silicon Valley company has a stake in, in Forbes. Bono happens to be one of the partners, which also freaked me out when they bought the stake. I was like, oh my God, I've been like writing all this stuff about Bono and like, now he's my boss, right? Um, anyway, they wrote to me saying, we love your blog and we think it's great and we want to invest in it too. Who are you? And I was like, ah. so I finally told them, I was like, well, it's me, you know? And then they were kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. not so fun anymore, you know what I mean? Then, no, then, then I could see the wheel spinning like, oh, well, maybe we can get it for free, you know, like, aha, you know? Um, I was on this panel the other day and somebody asked a guy, a blogger guy from the Washington Post, what's the first thing you would tell someone, if, uh, one of your writers who wanted to do a blog? And, and the answer was, we're not paying you, you know? So um, that's kind of like the, the whole ethos of, the, of the, uh, the internet. Well, you guys know that better than anyone, right? You're the ones who are making the money. Uh, but um, uh, AdSense, don't mean to say anything, but um, I don't even want to go on about AdSense, but um, where does all that money go? I don't know. I, I had AdSense once, I had 500,000 hits in a day, and I looked at my AdSense account, I was like, you've made $9.72. I was like, what the, right, you know, like, uh, but, um, sorry, I know that you, it, you guys are all, uh, they, and it's not, it's not class, you know, rivalry or jealousy, yes it is, um, uh, but, uh, um, so, where was I, I was talking about, um, Oh, so, so the Forbes guy, so I came, I t came out and told them, and they said, let's try to put it on Forbes.com. And m over m many, many months, they finally decided, okay, we'll do this, which I think is amazing. So now they're sponsoring my blog, and they're actually paying me to, to write this blog. And the only thing they told me is, like, we're not going to have anything to do with it, and don't, we don't want you to tone it down or change it or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so do whatever you want. And, um, and I kind of told them, like, man, do you, do you, like, some of the top guys there, I said, do you actually read it? And they're like, no, but we heard it's good. I think, well... Let me tell you a couple of things that have been on there recently, and they um, they were like, oh, you know, you know, but they were, you know, they were cool about it, and and um, finally in August, the New York Times figured out who I was and um, uh, sent me an email saying, uh, this guy Brad Stone sent me an email saying, I'm pretty sure it's you, and and I thought if I, you know, I could, I didn't want to lie. But I could kind of say, well, you know, no comment. But then, you know, it's just going to be death by a thousand cuts. So I thought, well, I'll jump on the grenade and, you know, I'll finally, you know, plus it's the New York Times, right? If you're going to have to be outed by somebody, it's better than Valleywag, right? So, uh, and, and Valleywag, Valleywag kept taking, kept taking um, shots and they kept getting it wrong. And I was like laughing my ass off because they would, they would do these big things where they would now like, tomorrow we've got him. Fake Steve, we've got him. And the first time I did it, I thought, oh my God, they really do it. I wrote them an email begging them not to out me. You know, please don't do this. You'll ruin it. What's the point of this? And, you know, you should buy it instead and pay me. No. Um, and then, and they, were, and then they, they were so sick, they were so evil, that they actually ran that pleading email from Fake Steve saying, listen to this desperate loser, you know, begging us not to do it. And they go, well, too bad, pal. And they go, after the jump, the name. And they, so I'm reading, I was shaking, I was shaking. I read, and I jumped, and it was like this guy at Wired.com, who, who I knew I was emailing with him all the time, because they were sponsoring the blog at the time. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is so great. So then it invented this whole thread of, you know, Nick Denton of Gawker being the, you know, the world's greatest investigative journalist. And we invented a verb called to Denton, which means to, you know, to screw up in a big royal way publicly. <laughs> and, and I 
think it actually, somebody actually put it into the urban dictionary, like to Denton as a verb is now to screw up really badly. Um, and I started writing all these things about Valleywag. Valleywag's about to announce tomorrow they've found Princess Diana. She's living in Dubai. And, and, uh, and then I'd run a follow up saying, oh, they pulled the veil back and it's just a woman who looks like Princess Diana. I found it on the web, I found a picture on like Google image searches, which, by the way, thank you for that. It's really great. Um, I, I found a, like a Princess Diana impersonator who looks a lot like Princess Di. So I had this, you know, Valleywag now has to retract the story. It wasn't really Princess Diana. And um, so I was having a lot of fun winding them up and calling them names. And, and they were emailing me the whole time saying, you know, we're going to get you. And they tried two more times and they even worse guesses. Um, so that, it was all kind of fun. Like that cat and mouse part of it was okay. But actually, when I finally did get uh, busted, I was sort of glad because it was, it was tiring to have to, you know, have these, if people were like sending me emails with links that were really just a, a link to try to catch my IP address, and they're like, oh, it's in Boston, you know, and, and it was like crazy, it was stupid, and, and um, so I was kind of glad, anyway, there was, I, I just don't know if it's going to be, if it'll still be fun, people still, still seem to be reading it, although the, the total numbers are down a little bit since, um, uh, well, like June, July, and August were big because of the iPhone, and then July for the iPhone, and then August because I got outed. So September was back down to normal, but it's still, you know, it's still, God, it's a really big audience for one person. And it's been kind of fun for, for me to do that as a, you know, the difference is like if I write an article for Forbes print, I write a column now, I write this tech column, you know, I might get a letter, two letters, people saying, hey, that was nice, what's the address of that company? Like, you know, or, or if it's about Linux, they get right in, they hate me, right, and they, you know, they threaten to kill me and, you know, find my cat and boil it. And so, you know, this is terrible. <laughs> but, but, uh, but basically, you know, there's no real feedback. It's a real disconnect for a print journalist. And then on the blog, as you know, it's like really immediate and you get feedback right away, like this one sucks, you know, not your best effort, you know, or, or this one was good. And, you know, I'm always amazed, like people are so critical. Like, I have two little kids, we have twins, they're two years old. And I blog like in the morning when we get up and the kids are climbing on me and my wife's trying to run out the door and I'm trying to like, eh, like check the mail and you know, do the comments and bang something out quickly. And then, you know, in the middle of that chaos, I get one out and someone around like, this could have been so much better, dude. Like, I was like, oh, you know, it's free. You know, you didn't pay for it. But, um, or people, I'm now getting, ever since the Times thing happened, there's people who I don't think were reading early on who only heard about it recently. And they got upset because I, I used a couple swears and, and uh, like blasphemy in, in headlines. Like one being, God damn it. Like, Right. I got to think, you know, your blog is wonderful and really intelligent, but I don't think you need to lower yourself to that coarse line. So I was like, God damn it. Like, that's not that bad. But, um, but so, and then, oh, people get really outraged. Like, I'm taking you out of my reader. That's it. I'm, you're out of my RSS reader because you, you know, blasphemed. I'm like, okay. I guess you haven't been along very, you know, haven't been around. I did one about Britney Spears. You know, recently she was photographed again, you know, without underwear. And uh, I had a link to that. And I, I didn't run that photo, but I ran a thing saying, we're not going to let her be an iPhone spokesperson anymore. And um, I needed some lame connection to reason to put it on my blog, right? So, um, <laughs> and that was like the best I could think of. And anyway, all these people saying, this blog has been wonderful, but I'm leaving now. If this is the kind of humor that you're going to have here, I don't want to be here anymore. I was like, well, it's probably better off, you know? But um, <laughs> anyway, um, that's, that's generally the, the gist of the thing. If you want, I mean, questions and answers might be more fun than me just. Um, I ramble, but um, do, you, do you have questions or anybody you want to, anything specific you want to ask about? And oh, by the way, I, I know I did something about Google like yesterday or the day before, and, and honestly, I didn't do that because I was coming. I did, quite the opposite. I forgot that I was coming here. And, um, and um, just now, when I got to the lobby, I was like, oh, crap, I wrote that thing about Google's in trouble. Like, believe me, Google in trouble is like, you know, uh, the kind of trouble most companies would love to have, right? Like, you know, like Sun would love to have the Google in trouble trouble that, you know. Um, anyway. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm sorry to take questions and, and uh, yeah. So um, I'm just going to ask if you could repeat the question because oh, right, right. we okay. got it on our microphone. So. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I was wondering if you can comment on your experience with the uh, fake Steve Ballmer. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I mean, my interaction with the fake Steve Ballmer? Yeah. I don't know who that is, right? I have a theory. I think it's Dvorak. I think he got outed recently. I think, uh, or they claimed it was Dvorak. And it seems to me like Dvorak. Um, I don't think it's very funny, right? And um, I st when it came out, he started bombarding my, my uh, posts with comments on I mean, everyone with a link to his blog, trying to like draft on my blog to draw people over to his, which is fine for a while. But after a while, it was annoying because he just kept writing these insane, stupid comments, right? And they weren't funny. And um, so I started moderating him out. Um, but <laughs> um, but I, I have a theory on why it's not funny. And, um, and it's that. I think in terms of parody, in terms of doing this kind of thing, like Jobs is a perfect 
a, a very good target for this in the sense that he has one face to the world of this is Zen, he's under control, blah, blah, blah. But you kind of know from everybody who ever worked at Apple or the books about him that, you know, behind the scenes, he's, you know, a completely different guy and really difficult and a monster and a diva and all that kind of thing, right? Whereas, see, Bomber to me doesn't lend himself to parody. As I, I was at Microsoft yesterday, I told him this, you know, Bomber kind of just has one face to the world. He's monkey boy, and he's up on, like I basically said, if you're on stage, you know, with sweat pouring down your arms, and you're running around and dancing going like this, like you can't parry that guy, because he's already parried it himself, right? <laughs> like he's just, he is a parry, I mean, he's just out there, and, and he doesn't care, you know? The thing about Jobs that makes it funny is that Jobs is trying to pretend to be, you know, namaste and all that stuff. Um, so I, 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 I had some, I've, he emailed, whoever it is that's doing that does email me once in a while or taunts me. And I think, I don't read his blog very much anymore. I think occasionally there are things on his blog where he'll say stuff about my blog. Is that right? I, I, you don't know either, right? Yeah, see, who keeps track of this stuff? But there are also, fake, someone told me today, um, there are fake, fake Steve blogs where there's another fake Steve who's doing like a parallel universe version of my fake Steve, right? And then there's, then there's uh, this guy in Canada. I'm not going to say his name on camera, but... Um, but you know who you are, psycho. Um, and he's, um, and he, he hates me, right? He hates me um, as Dan Lyons. He's hated me, he's had blogs about me as a Forbes reporter for a long time. And then when I got outed for, for doing Fake Steve, he was like, oh, Apple plug, oh, he can control himself. So he now has a fake, I forget what it's called, but anyway, it's, another, it's a blog that's like an anti-blog to my blog. Everything I post, he posts like why it sucks, you know, or, or why it shows that I'm a racist, or I hate women, or blah, 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 like, you know. So that's kind of, I read it for a little while, but then I was just like, how much, how much of that can you take, right? Um, and his is, his is really mean, you know, it's like really like, you know, I was, <laughs> I've gained some weight, we had two-year-old twins, right? So I've gained some weight the last couple of years. Um, and um, I was on TV, on CNBC when I got outed, and at one point, in one of the shots, I kind of tilted my head back. I was laughing. And this guy froze frame of it. And he's like, look at this fat bastard. Look at his waddles. He's got a waddle under his neck. And he do a little thing around it. I was like, oh, man, dude, you know, that's not cool. That's not nice, right? But so he's just got, like, he's just, he's just got totally. And a lot of the, the Linux people, this is ideal Linux community that hate Linux, right? Which is like, how do you hate an operator? I mean, I, I don't know. You know, they don't really carry the way. I use it. It's fine. It's nice. Forbes runs on it. You know, my TiVo box runs it. It's cool. Um, but they, when I got outed, Grocklaw wrote this really great. It's actually worth reading to go back and see this because it's, it's fantastic. So they did this analysis where they said, like, clearly, Fake Steve has been a Microsoft black ops operation from the get-go. It was funded by Microsoft. And if you look through the postings, you can see that they often coincide with whatever Microsoft's talking about that month, Fake Steve's talking about it too, like, you know, making fun of people ready or, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then they the, the, went around the bend to suggest that um, the book deal I had was probably a way for the Borg to, like, fund me, to pay me money, but wash, launder the cash through, you know, Perseus Books that published the book. And it's like, I mean, it's just so around the bend. Like, that kind of thing is like, how do you parody that? Like, it's just, like, amazing. I mean, it's, like, it's already a parody, right? But I, I try to anyway. I've been trying to do, like, insane Microsoft paranoia stories about, you know, but I apply it to Apple. You know, clearly this must be a Microsoft operation because there are no fingerprints and no traces, so that's how you know it's Microsoft because <laughs> they're so good, you know. I was telling those guys yesterday, you know, like, the, you're the puppeteers, you know, who, who, um, who run the world, and, and really I think they're the gang who couldn't shoot straight. And, and I mean, like, by the way, I like Microsoft, but, you know, I don't think there is... Demon is, uh, you know, uh, devilish as uh, people make them out to be. I'm sorry, another uh, question if you. Uh, yeah. You know what uh, Steve Jobs thinks of Steve Jobs? <laughs> well, at All Things D at this conference, he, he said, uh, they, Walt Mossberg asked him if he'd ever read it, and he said, Yeah, I read some recently, and they were, they were pretty funny. But, you know, again, I think all those guys, like, you never, that's the whole reason a, the blog can be funny, is because those guys never say anything that isn't, you know, at least, you know, prepared, especially Jobs, he's very careful. So I'm sure somebody in PR said to him, if you're asked about this lunatic blog, just say, you know. So I think he, but I know one of his PR people had bought a bunch of T-shirts from the Cafe Press shop, and I think men's sizes, I think they were wearing them around Apple one day or something for a joke. And, I, you know, he probably gets a kick out of it. And um, th at the time that he said that, I had just posted, it was when he and Gates were going to appear together at All Things D. 
And I was writing these things about, and it was all supposed to be this like historic summit. These two statesmen of the industry are going to meet and talk. And, but I was writing these things saying like, no, Gates, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to tear your head off, you know. And, and I had this thing where he was going to, he was going to let Gates get up on stage and then be really late and let, let Gates sit there and sit there and sit there and get really nerdy and nervous. And then the door would fly open, the lights would come down, and like the immigrant song would come on. And, you know, Steve would come out swinging a broadsword like this, you know. And, and, um, and, and I, I was thinking, like, if the, if, if, if the real Steve Jobs read that, I hope he would laugh. Like, I think he would get that. I think he's probably going to sense of humor. He'd probably think, like, yeah, that's pretty funny, you know. But um, if not, I, you know, I don't know. Because so, most of it's pretty harmless humor, you know. I, I don't, you know, I hope, you know. Um, anyway, any, any other? Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the question is, what do I say to the accusation that the Canadian guy is actually me, actually is writing the real fake Steve Jobs, and I'm a front? Is that? No, no, no. Oh, oh. oh, that I'm writing that Canadian. Oh, so the question is, the accusation is that I am secretly writing that Canadian bash blog. I'm blashing, bash, bashing myself to drive traffic to me. I have no comment on that at this time. Um, I, that's a good question, but uh, you know, uh, I don't have enough time or energy for that. But um, but it's a good idea, you know, because I could link to my own stuff. The other thing I, I was hoping to learn, either here or in Mountain View, is I want to learn how to optimize so I can pop up on the on the search engines higher. And I think by linking to myself, if I created a little constellation to link to cross myself, right, it would work. But uh, I haven't had the energy right now. I can barely keep up with. It. I mean, even now I have to be here this week, and I'm trying to blog. Uh, from the road, and you know, I bank some up in advance sometimes, and um, but it's 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 hard even just to keep up with it. I try to do like five a day, and it's hard to to, to keep that pace. But, uh, so, what kind of assistance do you have? To, do you have any? No, no, none at all. It's absolutely me. I've made up this whole world of like I have these two fake assistants in Krasnodar, Yulia and Natasha, right? Um, and. Um, and, and they always have them doing menial tasks and messing around with them and making them do stuff over and telling them, that's shit, you know, and, or, uh, you know, do it again. And then I tell them, go back to the first way. Uh, but no, none at all. I, I, have a, I have a friend in Boston who this week, I gave her the logins so that she could um, check in once in a while and um, moderate comments. And I told her she could write a couple items if she wanted to, like, you know, go ahead and, you know, because she kind of wanted, because it's kind of fun. Like, once you start doing it, it's, it's very addictive, you know. Once you get the voice and it's like, you can, I, for a while, I was still to keep thinking, like, I'm going to stop. I'm not doing this anymore. This is insane. It's a waste of time. But then I'd wake up the next day, or I'd be in the shower, and I'd be like, oh, you know, no, I have to write that one. Because, like, you know, you think, like, oh, it's too good to resist, you know? Um, like when, when Sun changed its ticker symbol to Java, that still, like, cracks me up. Like, I don't know why. That's like the, it's like you, you almost can't resist parodying it, you know? I, I, I was so glad that to, to cover that as a straight reporter, to be like, Sun announced so you're going to change your ticker symbol to Java. And to, like, what? You know, how insane is that? Like, and, you know, like, what's next? They're going to, like, you know, Sun announced so we have a major initiative tomorrow. We're going to change our corporate color from purple to, uh, you know, a green. We think green is going to be the new growth color of Sun, you know? It's just, like, some of the stuff that happens in the industry is so bizarre, and, and nobody ever covers it. And the weird thing is that like, if you've got a bunch of business reporters around, like the Journal guys and Business Week and Fortune, everybody who covers this stuff and all my friends in the trades, you know, we all write this straight stuff. But then if you, when we're all hanging around, we're all kind of, we all know how loony it is, right? I mean, it's just like you, right? I mean, I think that was actually what made the blog start appealing to people is people were reading it going like, yeah, that's actually kind of true, you know, like, um, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and you don't see it elsewhere, which is a, an interesting point about media and how media is changing and and all that, but um, I don't want to get you know serious. But um, are there any other questions? Or uh, yeah. I agree that Steve Jobs' character lends itself fairly well to you know parody, and you prove that. But how much of your image of Steve Jobs is based on public perception or on personal research? You know, did you talk to right, yeah. Apple engineers? Did you read any of the biographies, which are really interesting? And there is a couple of really interesting. Ones. Yeah, I did uh, early on when I decided after the first few weeks. I the first at first no. And I was getting lots of stuff wrong. Like I, I, I had John Ives' name with an S, and I didn't know who was on the. I didn't know much about Apple. But then I decided if I'm going to do this, so I went and read a bunch of biographies, which are really good, and they have all the great backstories about the early days of Pixar and Next, and and so I got a lot of the back stuff there. Um, and otherwise, I, no, I don't have like a lots of sources. People tell me. Only recently, I've started meeting people who used to work at Apple, or people write to me and they say, I worked for Steve for five years, and you know. It was just like that. But a lot of it was like dumb luck. Like I basically was trying to imagine, and I was really exaggerating. And I think, to be honest, I think that there's now, uh, there's Steve Jobs, and then there's, and there's me. 
All right, and then you know, more like, and then there's um, Fake Steve is this character in the middle. I think Fake Steve actually has become his own wacky little character, and he's an exaggeration of Steve Jobs, but in many ways doesn't really have any bearing on Steve Jobs. And a long, long time ago, like really early on, I started thinking of him as a fictional character that I could I could make him do whatever he wants, you know. And the same thing with Larry and all the other guys. And the only way for me to really keep doing it was to think. These are, these are my characters now, and I can make them do whatever they want. I don't have to be too beholden to what they really do. Although, the readers are very quick to call it right in and say, Steve Jobs would never say that. Or, you know, they're very, they really want you to stick to the conceit. Like, if I, I posted something about EMC recently, and I got a lot of comments saying, Steve Jobs wouldn't pay any attention to EMC. This is, this is clearly Dan Lyons. Well, it was, you know, it was fair criticism. It was true. You can't, people want it to stay to the conceit, but there's a big latitude in terms of what fake Steve would do. And he's, like, now become this, yeah, this weird kind of, thing in and of himself, which is a guy, one guy wrote a very, actually very interesting essay about it, this guy who's a, an architect in Scandinavia someplace, and somebody sent me a link to it, a really interesting essay about being fake, and um, that the fake becomes kind of its own thing, and um, he was talking about, I don't know, who, other, other authors who have, who have adopted these fake persona, and suddenly, you know, you can come alive with it. You don't want to be beholden to the real guy, because then you're, well, then you're not really writing fiction, and you're just very limited. Uh, so you want it to be something, you know, that has its own life. Um, but it, it's an interesting, interesting, um, uh, interesting, weird world to be treading around in. But sorry. What do you know about who Steve Jobs is behind the Oh, I just make it up. Well, then uh, some things I've heard. I mean, if you read the biographies, you hear about him. You, you hear certain stories, like um, in the book, there's, a, there's an anecdote where it opens with him sitting in a, in a meditation room, the Tassajara Zen room at the, at the Apple Center, which I, I don't think there exists, right? I mean, I'm making up all the stuff about Apple. But he's in his meditation room, and he's gazing at a circuit board, and he's non-thinking about his circuit board, right? And it's the circuit board for the iPhone. And, um, and it works, but it, he thinks it's ugly. And so he's telling the engineer, he's told his engineers, this needs to be more beautiful, and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to non-think about it for a while, and then I'll bring it back to you. And you know, and they're all pissed because you know they already works, and they're electrical engineers, and he has a big fight, and he ends up firing a guy over it. But the point is, that's actually a true story from uh, one of the biographies. I, I, I lifted that in the sense that when they were building the first Macintosh, and he got involved in the in the project finally, he went down and saw the motherboard, and said, "No, wait, no, you can't. That's no way. That looks. They can't have that. It's too ugly." And they were like, "Yeah, but it works." And you know, and there's a reason why this big chip's over here and the little chip's over here. And you know, I don't know any of it. And he's like, "No, I don't care. I, I want you to do it. This one should be here, and these two like this." And they're like, "Yeah, but it won't work. You know, we'll have leakage and stuff." And he's like, "Just do it. Just try it." So they, they actually spent like months trying to like make a circuit board work based on what he thought was pretty. Only, and, and again, of course, they, and they didn't plug it in. It wouldn't work. And, it, and it finally, they finally said to him, look, dude, it's just not going to work. You know? And he said, OK, fine. But, and, his, and their point was like, nobody's going to see it. It's inside. He said, but like, I'll know it's there. You know? And that's, you know. And they're like, it's, you can't even open this box. right? It's going to be a sealed box. He's like, I don't care. Everything about this box has to be perfect. Which, I mean, so if you read that anecdote in a biography, just think about it. Like, I mean, you could get a lifetime's worth of riffing out of it. Like, what does that, that one anecdote tell you about that guy as a character, right? I mean, it's phenomenal. So I use that as a, a, a direct lift, but then also in terms of informing how he must be around people. You know, and I've heard, you hear enough stories of him, like, you know, um, like the famous, one famous one, well, not famous, but one I've heard that, that captures him is, okay, uh, some big business magazine, it wasn't us because they don't talk to us, but it was um, maybe Fortune or Business. Somebody sent a photographer to do a cover shot at Jobs. And the guy gets there and he says, okay, um, scout around for a location. Well, we're thinking here in the, in the conference room would be good and this is a nice background. He sets it up and they set the lights up and they, they do Polaroids and they shoot a guy. And, and then Steve walks in and goes, mm, I, don't, I don't like it, I want to go outside. And like, but you already told us to do it inside. You're not out, the first we're going to do outside, no, 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 now I want to go outside. So they take everything down, they go outside, they set up the lights, blah, 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 they do the whole thing, they take the Polaroids. And then somebody comes down and says, uh, Steve doesn't want to do outside. He says, let's just go back to the conference room where we're going to be. So they slap everything back upstairs. They slap the lights, blah, 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 They take the Polaroids. And uh, they come in and say, OK, we're ready to go. And they say, uh, you know what? Uh, it's four now. Steve will be here at five. Can you wait? Uh, OK. You know, five comes, six comes. Finally, somebody says, you know what? Um, Steve just doesn't want to do it. Steve just, he's not in the mood. Steve is just not in the mood today. He's gonna, he doesn't want to have his picture taken. It looks too corporate. And, th and then they all just leave. You know? And that kind of thing of like, you know, uh, you know uh, abusing underlings. Or, um, and I like to rip on the idea that you know, he has this image of being this ultra, 
perfectionist and this eye for detail and everything is so perfect. Um, so I sort of exaggerate that. So you can pick up traits just on what you read about him and just exaggerate it like in a cartoonish way. So a lot of it is that. I, but, you know, I don't think anything in my book ever, ever has actually happened. You know, or another thing of exaggeration is they're really secret at Apple, right? They're really secretive and they never tell you what they're doing and they go to great lengths to not let anybody in the building and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I exaggerate that. So I have the iPhone guys working in this lead line building where so spy planes can't do ultra, you know, whatever, see into it. And Steve himself even can't go into the building. And, um, you know, you can, you can just exaggerate all the, you know, the, the, the uh, Israeli commando security squads and stuff. So you can, you can really go g g broadly overboard about how Apple guards. It's, it's secrets, you know. So, I mean, you take a few best basic traits, preciousness, pretentiousness, blah, 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 you know, and you go from there. Um, any questions? Or, uh, uh, so have you gotten any interesting comments back from anyone else that you read about on the blog? Like, <laughs> like I'm going to kill you when I meet you, those kind of things. No, um, you know, like the Microsoft guys, as soon as I got outed, they, I, I had friends there for a while, uh, or people I deal with a lot, who were writing me while going, like, dude, this is you, isn't it? I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Because they could tell, like, I did too much stuff about Linux and, and, and open source and um, uh, stuff like that. And they kind of knew that was a giveaway. But, um, uh, no, they called me right away. And they're like, dude, we want to have you up. And you come up and give a speech. And blah, blah, blah. Like, they totally love it. And, you know, and, and, and people often ask me, like, what about this? You know, you call Bill Gates a beast bastard. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I, I don't think he cares. You know, and he, I, at first, I don't think he reads it. But like, I think he gets it. It's a joke. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's the exact. The joke is that you know, Steve is so obsessed with like you know, like like Ahab with the white whale, right? He's like you know, obsessed with jaw uh, with with Gates and you know, blah blah blah. And why does they have why do they have ninety five percent market share when we have better stuff? And so you know, uh, it, you know, it's, yeah, I think they're okay. Um, Sun has never contacted me. <laughs> Sun, Sun, um, I I, <laughs> and I deal with those guys, so I know them. But they have never ever. Um, never reached out to me at all. I think they don't like the My Little Pony thing. Um, <laughs> and, and the weird thing is that that came from Sun. I, I didn't know about that. That's a real nickname for, for Jonathan, apparently, inside at Sun. I, I was calling him Ponytail Boy. And finally, somebody from Sun wrote to me and said, you know, we actually call him My Little Pony. And, and here's a picture. And I was like, oh, thanks. So um, there, there are some people who I think, you know, but most of, most of what I get is not like leaks from co companies, you know, I don't, I don't think. But, uh, but no, uh, you know, look, I'm here, right? I mean, um, I definitely have made some jokes about uh, Google and, and Sergey and his Legos. And um, now I've never met those guys and probably never will, right? But um, I had, oh, and I, Sergey had an Uncle Fetch. I had this fake character. Sergey had this uncle. This crazy uncle who came over from Krasnodar. That's how that was the first link to Krasnodar. Um, and uh, Uncle Fetcher came over to live with Sergey, and was uh, he always had this dream to take a bath in a tub full of caviar with like two strippers or something. And so, so Sergey says, "Oh, whatever you want, you know, go ahead, do it." And um, you know, I tried to try imagine like what would be the ultimate just gross thing, you know, somebody would do with all the money in the world. What would you do? I guess buy a jumbo jet and fly around. I don't know, but um, uh, um, but so and the, and the Google guys are in the book too. At one scene in the San Jose Jet Center where Steve and Larry are hanging out with a guy who's something like Andy Grove. Um, uh, and they look across the room and there's the Google guys with like, they just drove on a bus with all these girls from Stanford. And, um, and they're all going to Vegas for the weekend. And they've got like Chad Hurley and a bunch of other like Web 2.0 guys. And, and the old guys are sitting there going like, we don't like them. You know, get a haircut and stop wearing jeans. And you know, they're all, um, you know, Andy Grove was going on about how the, you know, those values used to be engineers, they used to be smart people. And now it's like freaks like you. And you know, um, and, but the Google guys are just having a good time and, and off for the weekend. So. I don't think that's based in reality either, but I'm sure they work really. I'm sure they work really, really hard. But um, uh, you know, it's, it's all a joke. So, but but no, no, I haven't ever really had. Uh, you mean you mean like did anybody call and get mad? Or you know, Fred, say, that was awesome. Oh, oh oh yeah, some people love it when you take the piss out of them. Like Fred Vogelstein at Wired, I did a thing once where he he was he doing a story about Microsoft and they accidentally sent him their dossier on him. Which had, so, so, do you remember this one? And it said all this stuff about, like, you know, Fred's not the, you know, he's not the quickest guy. In the, it was, a lot of it was not very flattering. And, um, and, and he wrote his story and then said, in the spirit of radical transparency, I'm going to publish my Microsoft dossier. Like, he published all this bad stuff about himself. So I thought, oh, that would be good. So I did one saying, well, Apple feels like we should publish our dossier on Fred, too. <laughs> so I had, I had Fred's dossier with things like, um, you know, Fred lost his virginity at age 34 in Thailand. Uh, you know, 
Fred is very sensitive about his clothes, don't stare, you know, Fred's SATs, 520 uh, verbal, 420 math, just FYI, you know, uh, Fred, drives a, uh, Fred drives a Celica, doesn't know it's a chick car, so, um, and I think he was pissed at first. But he, he has since written to me, and he said, like, dude, you know, that's funny. And I was supposed to meet him, I think, when I'm out there. And you know, he, was, he was okay with it. I think, you know, I, I pick a lot on journalists more so even than, than uh, the executive kind of people. And I think that's kind of more fun. Um, and most of them, I think, get it, and they're okay with it. And, you know, they're, they're a guy at the journal I, I made fun of a couple times wanted to meet me in Seattle this weekend. But I didn't know if it was a trap, so I didn't go. Because I thought, you know. Um, uh, but no, no, I think most people, most people think it's harmless. You know, it's like being in a comic strip, you know, whatever. Uh, any other questions or? Nope, that's it. Okay. Well, uh, well thank about, you. Oh, oh. About, um, what does big Steve Jobs have in store for Google? For Google, well, we do. I do actually have this this org chart, this this fake Steve version of an org chart that's a little upside down, um, and we're going to publish it and like this, like Al Qaeda most wanted list. I posted this. We re I really do have this thing. Some, <laughs> someone someone spent a lot of time making this and. Um, and as people leave, as they vest and leave, we're going to just like put an X across them, you know, boom, 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 and like keep coming back to it. So that'll be um, that'll be one funny thing. I don't know. Are you guys all all like independently wealthy now? You're just like not going to work anymore next year or something? Is that the, is that the big exodus is coming? Yes. Sir? We've hired a lot of people in the last couple of years. Oh, and they're not they're not the big richy rich ones, right? I see. Okay, but the guys. I I went to a party recently in, in Atherton, hosted by a bunch of oh, there was a bunch of Google people there, and. Boy, I felt really poor. I was like, what a schmuck am I? Like, man, look at these people. I mean, it's just like sick. It's sick what they've done to the valley. I mean, you know, as it says in the book, you know, of course people hate us, you know. They've got this whole generation of people driving around in Ferraris, you know, like nerds, nerds with sports cars, you know. And um, Larry is going on about why people hate people like Larry. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, his, his theories are just jealous. But, uh, but anyway, so for Google, you know, Nothing but love, really. You know, it's all love. And, um, and uh, I mean, come, come on. Like, and somebody, somebody actually said to me, do you think they get mad? And I was like, come on. Like, do you think Eric Schmidt gives a crap or Sergey Brin? Do you think they care? I mean, I, I, would you trade places with them and like, have some lunatic blogger make fun of you once in a while? Like, definitely. I would definitely take that trade, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely love to be. Same with Gates, you know, or Bomber. Maybe. Uh, but, um, uh, I, you know, but uh, no, actually, Bomber's really great. Bomber's like a really good interview. Like, out of all these guys to talk to for an interview, he's one of the few who, like, really, like, let it rip. Um, he's really, really a, a good guy. But, uh, but no, I don't have any, and, you know, I don't have plans, like, in the sense of, I mean, I literally get up every day, and I have no idea what it's going to, what it's going to be. And I just, like, check my mail and blah, blah, blah. And some days it's like I, I've thought of something, like some funny scene you could do. Like I had one with Larry who's going to spend the weekend with Bill Clinton and Ron Burkle a couple of weeks ago down in, in Malibu. And then, you know, it's kind of out of control and Larry calls on Saturday and he's incoherent and he can't talk. And he's like, oh, and you hear Clinton in the background and there's, you know, a party going on. But um, it's probably, probably not very nice, right? But, um, and, you know, but Larry is like the, the playboy best friend, the best pal, the sort of comic relief guy. So uh, some days I'll wake up and just have a Larry idea. Um, I, I, I never really know. I honestly I have n never any idea what's going to be from day to day. So, and, and eventually I think it's just going to run. I'm just going to wake up one day and it's like blank, right? Like nothing. And then it'll just stop. But, you know. Um, are there any other, any other questions? No? So uh, have any other public figures tempted you <coughs> to mm. another persona? Yeah, I, I, I Hillary. I think Hillary is right for one. And um, I mean, don't you think? I mean, she's same same deal because there's one face to the world, and then you know that behind the scenes, she's like, you know, all right, here are the people we need to have killed. Boom, boom, boom. You know, and uh, so, oh, this is on YouTube. Um, so no, I, I I think she's really right for it, and and um, she'd be good. Um, somebody had a Schwarzenegger uh, fake bug, but it was video. It was really good. Somebody in L.A. probably works in the movie business. It was a cartoon head of Schwarzenegger and a, and a talk, you know, voice. And, uh, but a pretty good impersonation. And it was the same kind of stuff that like I do, like, you know, but really kind of rude. And, um, but really worth checking out. If you look up fake Arnold or something, I don't know what it's called, but it was, it was actually good. Um, yeah, I don't know who, what are the figures. You have to get someone who is kind of pretentious and kind of presents one thing and then is, is really a different way, you know, or, or just someone who's kind of preposterous. Like Posh Spice would probably be a good one for if you're into that world. Or Lindsay Lohan, I, I don't know. Uh, Britney Spears, probably, um, just because it would be such a train wreck. But I'm not, I wouldn't know enough about that world to write about them. Same thing with the politics one, like the Hillary thing. 
I'd like to do it, but I don't really know. You need to be sort of immersed in the world so you can get the, the, the thing about the fake Steve thing is all the gossip from around the whole industry of knowing that, you know, how IBM is, you know, so you, and I, I don't know enough about the world of politics and consultants and who those guys are to do that. Wall Street would probably be another one that you could do, uh, somebody on Wall, there's got to be some preposterous figure on Wall Street. Hollywood, God knows, there's got to be like 20 people in Hollywood you could do, right? Uh, Michael Eisner, I think, would be a good one. Um, uh, or Michael Ovitz, right? He'd probably be a pretty good one. I, I, I don't know, but um, there is one. There's a Nick Nolte fake blog. Have you ever seen this? It's really bad. But it's, it's, it's funny, but it's like sick. I may have, they may have been dropped. I saw it early, early on. You just do a Nick, look for Nick Nolte's fake blog, and it's really off the rails and kind of like Nick's always out of control. And he's got a, he's got a sidekick. I forget the sidekick's name. Yeah, so, um, anyway, any, any other? Doug, Doug there's a what? Doug oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I think it's caught on now. Like there's, there's a fake Al Sharpton. Well, there's one in New York, a company called News Grover. It has a whole constellation of fake blogs. And this is actually a really good fake blog story. So they, they did one with Al Sharpton. And when Michael Vick got arrested for the dog fighting thing, they had fake Al Sharpton blog on it saying, you know, this is racist. If, if Michael Vick was a white quarterback arrested for dolphin fighting with dolphins and spears on their heads, you know, <laughs> he wouldn't be being arrested for this. You know, he'd be celebrated for that, right? So fine, fair enough. Except that MSNBC like, read this and picked it up and said, well, the Reverend Al Sharpton weighed in today on the Michael Vick scandal and ran a real story about it, like quoted this, right? <laughs> and the news group guys are like, yes! You know, like, like, because I've never been able to pull that off. I've never been able to actually fool anybody into thinking like Steve Jobs. I was kind of hoping early on, like, somebody would pick that up and say, like, Steve Jobs today weighed in, you know, on blah, 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 but like, nobody ever fell for it. I did early on I used to get email from people who thought it was Steve, really was Steve Jobs. Even now, there's people who get like so carried away, other readers have to remind them, like, dude, this is a made-up thing, right? But early on, I would get people writing in saying, you know, oh, I'm so glad, I'm a big fan of your products, I'm so glad to see that you're blogging, this is great, and I love your products. I want to ask you, in the next version of the MacBook Pro, could you have this feature and that feature, and I think it would be really great if you had this, and I, I'm like, what do I do with this, you know? So I would write back saying, you know, I'm only one man, but I will pass this on to engineering, and I'm thank you for the tip, and stuff. And then other people would weigh in saying, you know, oh, you dummy, you know, it's not really Steve Jobs, but that, that ran out of gas. Now the new thing is the foreign language mistakes and, and the, the geography mistakes. Even that's kind of running out of gas, but I've had a really good fun with that, the idea of there's so many people in the blog if you're waiting to correct your mistakes, you know. So if you intentionally make dumb mistakes, and the, I did one in Canada last week, and like 70 comments within like that much of like, dude, that's Ottawa, not Toronto. Get it straight. I'm like, okay, you know, I mean, people get really mad, but, um, but no, I, I uh, well, oh, that's it for that, I guess. Any other, any other comments? Uh, any, any questions or no? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And